Bonjour and welcome to this podcast. We'll be discussing the causes of French Revolution. And here with me, I have Ananya, Sanjana, Bhuvanesh and myself, Shalini. The French Revolution is a historical movement that shook monarch countries between 1789 and 1799 and denoted the end of absolute monarchy in France and gave the people of Europe ideas of ending monarch rule. I mean, that is the most reasonable thing that could have ever happened. And yes, that is exactly what did happen. You know, there must be a course of action that must have set this ablaze, something like a trigger point. Mm, one of the triggers would be the old regime, which was a socio-political system that existed before French Revolution. It consisted of three estates. The first estate was the high-ranking church members. The second estate who were the nobility, and the third estate was the bourgeoisie, peasants, and merchants. The first two estates reaped the benefits of the working third estate and had all the extravagant life to themselves. In conclusion, the unprivileged were the ones who paid all of the taxes and ended up being mistreated. And France was ruled through the system of absolutism. Absolutism? By itself, I think it can mean. The power rested on a person or a group because it is absolute. Indeed. Wait, now if these Tautic kings were going on, what was the king doing? The king of France levied all taxes on the third estate and decided to spend money. King Louis had a system where he can arrest anyone for any reason. There were warrants called black warrants in French, Le de Cache, used to imprison anyone. Also, he had the entire justice system in his hand. He controlled and appointed judges as he favored. He made all the laws and also made decisions for peace and war. A really important thing to point out was that France was uh, really bad at maintaining the finance. They were not like this just during the revolution, but before it too. What makes you say so? France had their primary source of income via agriculture, and agriculture was the French backbone. But the main reason why farming failed was that France was facing severe weather. A series of harsh weather destroyed the crops and ruined their economy. That made agriculture seem impossible. Now, the taxation system on the port seems straight off unfair. I understand this. Uh, if the farmers have really bad harvest and the cultivation, where will they go for money? In this scenario, the king was implying taxes left and right and from all other directions. And yeah, one more thing, the bourgeoisie had all their wealth gathered up and ended up paying them too. They were frustrated to find that nobles paid no tax at all. And I'm like so many percent sure that they must have gone bankrupt. That's true, but not completely. They were on the verge of it. The royal family spent their money on fancy residences like Versailles. And not just that, the queen was absurd with spending money. The government funded the American Revolution and as a result, they found their funds depleted. Instead of spending the money wisely, the government spent more than they take from tax revenues. The privileged classes of the first estate and the second estate that never got taxed at all. You know, there must be causes to this on the long and on the short term, right? Actually, yeah, there are some long-term causes that we have mentioned. France was being ruled through the absolute monarchy, the socio-political system, the old regime. The terrible weather left the citizens with no food and no money for the peasants. With no money from the cultivation, they were taxed too much. The system of mercantilism had set the third estate upset because they were restricted from trade. They also got influenced by the enlightened philosophers that gave ideas to the American and English Revolution. Since we talked about the long-term causes, it made me think, what are the short-term causes? The short-term causes are the bankruptcy situation caused by deficit spending. Though the financial ministers had proposed changes, but they were rejected. And the famine set of circumstances remind the worst in memory and caused great hunger among the impoverished peasants 
who are fearing that the nobles and estates general were seeking even greater privileges and the nobles were attacked throughout the country in 1789. As for the bankruptcy problem, Louis XVI had no choice but to call for a meeting of the estate generals to find a solution for it. All three estates were called and this set in a motion of series of events that resulted in the abolition of absolute monarchy and a completely new socio-political system for France. So then, the estates general recommended voting to be conducted as one estate one vote, but as the third estate demanded the voting be by population, which resulted in deadlock and a preempt tennis court oath. What was the tennis court oath? I'm guessing it might be something related to a tennis court and a pledge. And you're definitely right. As the third estate demanded to vote by population, they declared themselves as the National Assembly, to which the Louis XVI responded by locking them out of the meeting. Then, third estate located to a nearby tennis court where the members would vow to stay together and create a written constitution for France on the 20th of June, 1789. Then, three days later, on the 3rd, 23rd of June, 1789, Louis XVI relented. He ordered for the three estates to meet together as a national assembly and to vote by population on a constitution for France. After this, there were other phases on the country. Yes, including the National Assembly, there were four phases or periods of the French Revolution. The National Assembly and its time span being from 1789 to 1791. The second phase was the Legislative Assembly from 1791 to 1792 and the Convention period being from 1792 to 1795 and the last phase was the Directory from 1795 to 1799. And talking about the four phases, there were a lot of changes under the National Assembly. They abolished guilds, labor unions and special privileges. The Constitution of 1791 was formed. The Declaration of the Rights of Man and the Equality Before the Law for Men was made. There were also a lot of reforms in the local government and the taxes levied were based on the ability to pay. But Louis XVI did not actually want a written constitution and when the rumours of his plan to use military force against the National Assembly reached Paris on July 14th of 1789, the people stormed the Bastille and the privileges endured. The church lands were seized, divided and sold to peasants. All the feudal dues and tithes were eradicated. And moving on to the Legislative Assembly, during this time, the royal family had sought help from Austria and a lot of nobles had left France and were came to be known as émigré. As all of the privileges were eradicated, the first estate and the second estate still wanted their privileges back. Then political parties representing different interests emerged, namely Girondists and Jacobins. The third phase of the convention period was when the monarchy was destroyed because as long as the royal family lived, the monarchy could be restored at any time. So the royal couple were put on trial for treason. Marie Antoinette was guillotined on January 29, 1793 and Louis XVI was guillotined on October 16, 1793. Approximately 15,000 people had died by the guillotine and the guillotine was coming to be known as the National Razor. So many executions! No wonder it was called the Reign of Terror. You know, at least it was brought to an end. Moving on with the final phase, which was directory. It was an executive made up of five members. This suffered a corruption of poor administration, which led to the people of France getting frustrated and uh, disappointed with their government. Despite these struggles, the French developed a strong sense of nationalism. The national pride was fueled by military success and the political instability of the directory paved the way for the rise of a new military directory. Yes. It was a military leader, Napoleon Bonaparte, coming to power through a coup d'etat, who would end the 10-year period from 1789 to 1799, known as the French Revolution. Merci. See you again.